I think we doubled our user base in one wow. day or one week. Um, and it, of course, it was still quite small then, but that was huge for us. Um, yeah. We got so much more traffic, um, a lot of feedback. So everything just kind of exploded on one day. Hey, bootstrappers, welcome to Bootstrap Stories, the podcast where founders, marketers and thoughtful leaders share the most actionable tips on building a successful business. After meeting with hundreds of bootstrappers in the past years, I figured out that we all struggle to grow our businesses. But the truth is that most of us don't know where to ask for help or advice. That's why I decided to start this podcast, to give you all the keys to succeed at every stage of your business, all the tested strategies for solving your struggles and taking your business to a new level. No fluff, no bullshit, only a real talk between friends that help each other succeed. Hey, Marie, super happy to have you on the podcast. Hi, Guillaume. Thank you so much for having me. Just before we get started, I want to kind of outline, you know, like the topics we're going to discuss. So I really want to talk to you about your journey as a bootstrap founder uh, and documenting everything in public with uh, Tally. Get to know the tool and also, you know, like how you came up with the idea and what, you know, like uh, pushed you to quit your job and get started. And in the end, I also want to go through like your product and launch because you created like a, a pretty like awesome checklist on, uh, on Notion. So I'd love to know, you know, like a bit more about the, the, I would say backstage uh, of your launch. Sounds good. Perfect. Yeah. Happy to share everything uh, you want to know. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So can you maybe like, um, go back, you know, to 2020 when you decided like to, to quit your job? What pushed you to quit your job and how did you come up with, uh, with starting your first business? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I've been working as a mainly B2B marketeer uh, in the past. So I've been working at several companies in, uh, in Belgium. And I guess I've always wanted to try to do my own thing. Um, and also together with my partner, uh, Philip, uh, who's also the co-founder um, of Tally. We also wanted to try out like the whole digital nomad uh, lifestyle. <laughs> and um, yeah, 2020 seemed like the right moment for us to do that because we've had a We've had an ID um, for uh, our first startup. Um, so it was not Tally, but Hotspot, uh, something completely different, um, a marketplace that connects hotels and travel influencers. Um, and so we thought there was a problem there that we could solve. Um, <laughs> and we created like a very simple MVP and we got like our first customer. So we were doing that kind of on the side. Um, and when we saw that we got like first paying customers and some traction, we thought, that um yeah that we could you know decide to make the jump and um and go for it um i guess also good to know is that philip had sold his previous startup uh delta okay. um which also gave us some kind of financial buffer um uh, to you know quit uh, my job as well um because you know you never know what's going to happen uh, when you launch your uh, Uh, first or you know second startup um so we had that kind of planned out um and then i decided to, yeah, to quit and to go full time and, and work on hotspot and we were going to travel um we were going to go to asia because that's where our first clients were located um so we had it all planned out we left uh took the plane to bangkok uh, and then Uh, COVID hit, COVID. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> and that kind of, um, yeah, blew everything, um, and we quickly lost our first customers, we had to fly back to Belgium, um, yeah, we couldn't really find ways to connect with hotels, and they were our, um, yeah, sort of income. Really like the, the worst client. timing, and yeah. Yeah, worst timing ever to start um, a startup and travel. Um, and a couple of months later, yeah, first we thought, you know, this thing is not going to last very long. <laughs> um, but yeah, little did we know uh, back then. Um, and I guess by the summer of 2020, we, we saw that, yeah, we, we had to pivot because um, we had okay. no idea how long this was going to last. And yeah, we were both, you know, working full time on the project. Um, and that's how we, yeah came up with so the idea to when you, when you decided to pivot was it like um because you you had lost like your customers and you felt like okay like definitely this market is not addressable right now we have to change so we can make money or did you still have like a few customers but it was not really like a 
We Viable. still had a had a couple of them, but it was just mm -hmm. really difficult to reach new ones. Um, okay. And we were mainly doing like cold outreach, um, and the product was not that complex, uh, like on a technical level. So mm -hmm. we were mainly focusing on the marketing and sales, and there was just not a lot we we felt like we could do. Um, also, not knowing a lot about the industry, um, that was also new uh, to us. Um, and so, yeah, we we just um, were knocking on a lot of closed doors. I would say. Um, most of the hotels were closing or didn't have budget um, to okay. pay for anything. Um, and then, yeah, we just didn't really know how long it was going to last. And we didn't really, you know, felt motivated anymore. Mm. So I guess that was the main uh, main trigger to, um, yeah. To, to switch to Tali. <laughs> yeah. And uh, how, how did you come up with, uh, with the idea? And can you maybe like uh, let our audience know a bit like what you're doing exactly with Tali? Yeah, so Tally, it's a, it's a form building tool. Um, and how did we came up with the ID? I guess in our previous jobs, we used a lot of form building tools ourselves, also for Hotspot. Um, and you know, there's a lot of players out there. It's a very competitive market. Um, but, you know, you have the, the, the bigger players that can be quite expensive, um, which is something that we also experienced that as young startup founders ourselves. Um, and then there's like Google Forms. It's free, but it doesn't really give you the look and feel that you that you might want um, so we were kind of looking for something in between uh, and at the same time we're also big fans of notion and um, you know like the blank page um, just start typing uh, approach so all of that together made us think like hmm, you know maybe there is a small niche in the very big market because you know everyone need forms at some point um, in their life or in their businesses um, that we can claim um, also the no code uh, space was you know growing rapidly so all of that together made us think that we could maybe uh, have a chance of, of growing a product uh, in that space no that's really cool and uh, can you walk us through a bit so you started in summer 2020 it's been about like a, a year and a half yeah um, right can you walk us through kind of like the the different milestones so far and maybe like also how you acquired your uh, your first customers? Yeah, definitely. Um, we, we started very small. So Philip, uh, built, he is the technical co-founder. He built an MVP and it was it was very basic, I guess, as an MVP should be. Um, but it was also kind of scary. You could just create a form, but you could <laughs> not even publish it. Uh, okay. So you could not really use it. And we started sharing that with like family and friends, basically, to get first feedback. We have quite some some friends that also work in like tech industry and so they could give us some feedback um, and then once we had a bit more features I started doing um, cold outreach basically through Twitter DMs um, okay. and I was just looking for makers creators startup founders that, that could be interested in our product um, and sending them a message not scalable at all uh, in a <laughs> manual way <laughs> just asking like hey would you like to try it out you know it's free um, we would love your feedback and that's how we started and we did that for a couple of months and got a lot of um, yeah, a lot of feedback actually um, and people started sharing the product bit by bit um, and when we had like our first I think thousand users we decided to um, launch on product hunt so it was okay quite a bit later it's only in march 2021 that we did that um we also had a bit of a delay because our daughter was also born in between <laughs> in that period so um i don't think you need six a little months, break we, <laughs> we had we needed a bit more time um yeah and then we launched on product hunt i guess we, we might talk about that later on yeah. um, but that was our first like bigger um boosting growth, acquisition channel say. yeah mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then I guess, um, yeah, that's how we got our first users. Uh, that's interesting. And uh, today, like how many users do you have and uh, what's kind of like your uh, ARR? Yeah. So now we have, uh, I would say, 26,000 users. Um, nice. Most of them are free users. Um, and our ARR now, well, in euro, it would be like 160K. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's, it's growing quite steadily. So we're really, uh, really happy about that. Yeah, that's uh, no, that's cool. After like a, a year, I think like it's uh, it's always like the the toughest part is always I would say like to get off the ground, like get to your first customers, have people like start paying, 
And after that, as long as you're going, yeah. uh, I think up and to the right, it's uh, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I hope so. I hope so. I mean, I, we definitely noticed that the first year was more difficult, and now mm. the growth is speeding up um, a lot more. So um, yeah, it's going in the right direction. And um, what's kind of like the the business model? Because you you were mentioning you have like a lot of free users, so yeah. it's really pure freemium. Or like how how does that work exactly? Yeah, so it's a freemium product. Like ninety nine percent of our features are available for free, um, and we didn't want to put any limits on like the number of forms you can create or the number of submissions you can collect because that's something that we didn't like about other form builders. Um, okay. So you basically everything you need to create a form is is there for free. And then we have like a, a set of more empowering features, which is Tally Pro, um, more aimed at the needs of, of teams. I would say there's team collaboration, there's more customization. Um, you can remove the branding and so on. Um, and nice. that's, that's basically our business model. And um, yeah, all our free users have like a powered by Tally patch mm. on the form. Um, and because it's free, you know, it's quite easy and, and um, there's not really a barrier to try it out. You can, it also gets shared with friends and colleagues. Um, and because of that powered by patch, we gain more visibility through our free users. And I would say around 3% of those then, then convert into paying users. Nice. And do you actually track uh, the amount of new customers you have through this powered by uh, Tally? Um, yeah, yeah, we do. Um, and it would be, I think, um, uh, I would say our one of our biggest um, acquisition channels um, is, is the powered by marketing. Yeah, definitely. Nice. Is that, I think that's really cool. Like, uh, I know like Intercom used it like a lot, you know, like, uh, obviously like to grow, uh, their, uh, their acquisition channel, uh, and, and also a few newsletters do that really well. Is there like, um, any like, um, referral program that you would do? So for example, like if someone, you know, even if they are like a free user and, uh, they get like, uh, let's say um, someone comes from the powered by on their form and becomes paid users, would you like uh, create referral and give them like uh, free credits, for example, to get on the premium or? Yeah, well, we we, um, we have an, um, a referral program, but it works a bit differently. So you kind of okay. need to create your affiliate link. Uh, and if okay. then someone would sign up through your link and, and become a pro user, um, then you get they get like 20% uh, of the of the of the, of the revenue share. Or, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, indeed. Yeah. Now that's interesting because I was talking with uh, Marta, like uh, the CEO of Flowdesk, which is an email newsletter uh, and And what they do is like each and every one of their customers is actually an affiliate by default, meaning that they don't have to create anything, but each link on newsletters they sent is kind of like their affiliate link. So whenever someone clicks, they would back then like uh, get money if, uh, you know, when someone from their list is actually becoming a new customer. And uh, I thought it could be like actually for you because yeah. right now you are like uh, <laughs> 26,000 users. It's getting like a really like a good traction. And I guess like uh, your user base will keep growing with the free users. So it's, uh, you know, it's quite nice. Yeah, that's a really good idea indeed. I think that's, that's <laughs> something we should look into. <laughs> Thanks for sharing that. <laughs> and, uh, and, and I've seen that uh, you also like... Uh, share very publicly like your story. Uh, I've seen one of your articles like uh, on Twitter also. Um, is right. it like part of your strategy? Like why exactly have you started doing it? Was it just to get user acquisition or yeah? Yeah, in the beginning, I mean, we, we decided to build in public um, from quite early on. Um, To start with, it's also just how we learn from other uh, startups that are building in public. It's how where we get our information. Um, so it's also kind of a way to give back to the community. We were very active on like platforms like indie hackers um, in this uh, from the start. But of course, also that's where our target audience is. Um, and so for us, it's it's you know a way of content marketing and just to share um, you know our lessons learned and our milestones um, with other startups founders out there who might also be interested in tally um in the end yeah nice yeah i really like it i think it's i think it's a good strategy for you you know like to kind of like position yourself as you know like a founder telling your story so people start to like you and trust you so down the line when they need your product 
uh, or like to create a form, they will just go and check out Tally and, and start using it. Um, yeah. And yeah, I think it's a, it's, it's a smart move. Yeah, and I think that's, uh, for yeah, us, it's sorry. quite important. Uh, sorry. Uh, it's quite important because, you know, we are Tally. We're just a team of two. Um, so <laughs> our story is like, you know, the brand and, and the product. And a lot of people also really like that. And, you know, want to cheer for the underdog, basically, and then and, and would sign up uh, because of that. So that's that's definitely, um, yeah, helping us in, in growing the product. Nice. And um, I, I want to go back a bit, you know, like to, to that time, because, um, for people listening to the podcast, like we have a lot of, you know, young entrepreneurs or people who are just starting or who have started with a side project as uh, you did back then. Um, so when, you know, like you quit your job because you have your first paying customers and then there is something totally like out of the blue, like COVID that hits, no one had planned it. And your customers are actually hotels, which are like literally the worst customers to have in this type of period. What happened, you know, like uh, what happened in your mind and how do you deal with, okay, I need to make a pivot. Uh, how do I like talk about it, you know, to my family? Because obviously I think at that time you were, were you pregnant at that time or? Um, yeah, at the time of the pivot. Uh, yeah. Okay. So yeah. How, how did you like, what comes to your mind? Because you have to provide, you have all these things and you quit your job. So, um, yeah, really good question. Um, I, I, I would lie if I would say that it's not stressful, right? So it's it's definitely, it was definitely a, a difficult time. Um, I think for us, uh, first, we just started, we kept on building on the product and preparing, you know, behind the scenes and creating some content. And then, you know, we told them we will be ready for when better days come. Um, but unfortunately, yeah, that moment didn't really, didn't really come. And yeah, you, you, you are of course financially dependent on um, whatever you're working on um, but yeah as i said before we did take into account that you know with covid or without things can always go wrong you never know uh, if you're yeah. going to succeed so we did had some some um, financial buffer to at least last like for a year or longer um, which gave us some kind of um, peace of mind I would say um, I guess that's also the reason why you know we decided to have a baby because we we could afford it uh, at the mm -hmm. time I think I don't think we would have done that uh, otherwise um, but I guess how we approached it is we started getting nervous, right? Because we saw things were not working out. And then um, I think every week we had like an hour of brainstorm and we just had to come up with new ideas um, and, and to find something new. And Tally was one of those. I don't really remember what the others were. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, it, it, at first it was also a lot more complex. Like we, we thought that just a foreign builder would not be enough. And we went through a lot of, um, yeah, headaches and, and discussions <laughs> about it. Um, but in the end, we just, yeah, we just had to had to do something, and we just decided to jump again and and try it out. So I guess um, Philip is also better at that than me. You kind of need to try to stay calm and just uh, try something new because you know it, it, things will not fix themselves. Uh, that's something that that we have learned. Um, and yeah, I guess for us, it was important to have some money on the side so we could also make the right product decisions because mm -hmm. Tally is mostly free and in the beginning, you could not even pay for it. Um, and I guess if we would be um, in need of money sooner, then we might have made other product decisions. Um, so I guess, yeah, my advice would be to, if you can, you know, <laughs> to have some, some, something, um, some money backed up, uh, so at least you can you can last for a little bit. Yeah, hundred percent agree. I think like uh, if you can't sustain yourself for like a year or you know like it, I think it's okay like to live with very little resource in the early days and but you need to still have like enough resource because if you can't eat, if you can't like uh, pay your rent or whatever and. It's just not going to work out like, uh, yeah, we were, we were almost, we were spending very little, but just, you know, the rent, uh, need, needs to be paid and, you know, we need to eat. Um, of course, maybe it was a bit of a, um, 
actually good that it was COVID in the end because we couldn't do anything. We couldn't travel. We couldn't yeah. go to restaurants. So <laughs> no we couldn't more spend restaurants, money. No more drinks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we had nothing to spend money on uh, yeah. anyway. So that, that also helped. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so y you mentioned like uh, in the team, it's you uh, and your like uh, partner. Um, how, how is it going like to, to build like a, a software product, especially because I'm guessing like you're working remotely or in your house or traveling. Yeah. So you're basically like 24 seven together. Yeah. Uh, How, how do you handle this? <laughs> um, that's a question we get asked most often. Um, I guess we're lucky because we have compatible skills. Um, Philip has a background as a full stack uh, engineer. Um, and I'm like handling marketing and everything else that you know, comes with, with running a startup. Um, so we each have our own set of responsibilities um, and we have ownership over those. And that helps, uh, you know, to just make decisions and move forward and, and um, yeah, don't fight, basically. <laughs> um, of course, that happens uh, occasionally. And I guess what we try to do. So, yeah, we work from home. Um, we sit in, at the same uh, table, um, you know, I work, sometimes work in a coffee bar or make sure that I'm like somewhere else just for a change of, of environment. Um, but yeah, we also have a kit and that kind of gives us a limited hours of, of a focus work uh, per day. So, you know, between basically she goes to daycare and between nine to five, we need to get most of the work done and <laughs> then she when she done. goes to bed yeah, <laughs> yeah. so that also kind of helps to you know um put the uh, boundaries and and okay. put boundaries indeed um yeah but i guess um you know we make sure that we go for drinks with friends and that we do other things uh, in the evening and that we have enough things that give us give us more headspace um yeah not to not to uh, fight too much <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> and um and right now how big is uh, is the team is that just the two of you or do you work with like freelancers or it's it's still just the two of us yeah okay Okay. Okay. So you, you, you never hire like any freelancers to help you out with design or like all these type of things you, we, we've had, um, we've had one guy that helped us out with like illustrations on our website, because that's something okay. we just, we just cannot do ourselves. <laughs> um, and I guess, you know, in the future, we will need some help on like customer support, um, on that front and maybe development as well. Um, but we feel like for now it's still working out. Um, but I think those will be the, the areas where we will need to, need some help. Yeah. Nice. And uh, if, if we have to look at like uh, your kind of like growth engine and how you're like planning to acquire customers and what you've done so far. So we're going to come back to product and afterwards, but I just want like, we, we mentioned like building in public, which is like great way, like for content, you did outreach in the beginning, like to get your first users, get feedback, etc. You have a lot of word of mouth. Um, are you doing like ads, SEO or other things or? Yeah. Um, so ads, not, so we haven't really spent, uh, we haven't done paid advertising. Um, okay. it, it is something that I would consider in the future, but I feel like, um, we don't really need it right now. You know, we're growing at our own pace. Um, so we, we're not doing that. We are creating, you know, more content and trying to optimize our website for SEO reasons. So that will definitely be more and more important um, for us, especially because it's such a competitive space. Um, but next to that, it, it, it's kind of a combination of, of a lot of things. Um, keeping the product free will definitely still be a big one for us because the more users come in um you know the faster the our growth wheel uh, starts spinning um so that's something we want to keep uh, that way and we have a very strong focus on customer support which might not be seen as like a, an immediate acquisition channel but it is something that really helps us um to to yeah retain customers um and also to uh, to turn them in in our ambassadors um so that's definitely yeah uh just a very important uh, aspect of our day. Uh, I, I guess we would spend 50% of our time on that. Um, yeah, I, I think yeah. it will give, I mean, customer support, I think it's like literally the, the best thing to do, like uh, to first get your content ideas, know how to improve the products. And if they know also that you are like the founder, I think it's always like those moments are like super valuable when 
you are talking to the founders directly and you see like they are grinding hard working on the product i just want you make a, you know like pay for it and help them and you understand that it's not just a another company with like tens of thousands yeah. of people and no, that's cool. Yeah. That's something we see a lot. Like when, when we answer and of course we answer all the emails, but then people are like, Oh, I'm talking to the founder. And you know, <laughs> you, you took the time to reply uh, to my email on, you know, a Sunday evening. Um, that definitely helps, you know, to gain some trust um, and, and, and to keep, yeah, to keep customers on board. So for, for the support, you, you were mentioning like emails. Uh, are you only doing emails or do you have like also a live chat where uh, people can just ask uh, their question live? Yeah. So we don't have a live chat on the website, but we have a Slack channel um, okay. with like a yeah, growing community on, on Slack. Uh, and I nice. would say that's where we get the most feedback. Um, that's where we also ask questions to our users, where we like share our new features, um, you know, the, the, they get to see them for the first time. Um, so, yeah, I think Slack would be um, and then and then Twitter um, would be our biggest um, yeah, source of feedback. So people, whenever like they have questions about the product, they just go on to like your Slack and they ask their question. Yeah, a lot of them do. Um, would go on Slack or yeah, we have forms in our help center, so okay. people can fill out the forms as well and or or just send an email. Um, but you know, for the fastest response, they they would join Slack. Um, and the nice thing is that people are starting to help out each other uh, there as well. So we don't always have to be uh, the one answering. Yeah, involved uh, and... Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's like a, a community that is growing by itself, um, which is, yeah, great to see for us. Nice. How big is the community right now? Um, I think now it's a small thousand, like 950 people nice. uh, in there. So it, oh, it's that's still cool. small, that's, but uh, it's, it's Well, cool. I mean, it's, uh, <laughs> no, it's nice. Yeah. It's really nice. Um, so um, I guess now is, uh, is the time we can, uh, we can jump to, uh, to product hunt. Um, cause you know, you, you mentioned like, uh, your launch and you mentioned, you know, like, uh, reaching 1000 users first before like launching, what was the kind of your strategy before the launch and what have you been doing in order to, to make it like uh, successful? Yeah, so I, th I think for us, Product Hunt was important because, you know, their audience really maps on ours of like creators, makers, startups. So we also thought that, or we know that free products also do quite well on, on Product Hunt. So for us, it would be good to use that channel for our like first big public launch. Um, and so we thought it would be quite important to get things right. So we made sure that we had those first thousand users um, before we launched. Also that we had like some crucial features so that we wouldn't get like the feedback every time. Like, oh, I like it, but you, you know, you're lacking this and this feature. So we, we kind of wanted to be prepared and have like a certain level of, of, of features before we um, before we launched. Um, and then, yeah, we, we made sure that we, you know, were prepared. For me, it was my first uh, product hunt launch, but Philip has, has done some before. Um, and yeah, we made sure that we had like a newsletter to send to our users to ask for their support, um, that we had uh, prepared like the product and post and then the copy for that and the visuals because all of those things do take more time than than, than you would think um and then some some messages as well that we were going to send to different communities that we were part of uh discount codes um all of those things um and we made sure we had that and then yeah we just chose a Thursday because we read that that would be a good day uh, to launch. I'm not at all an expert, so I'm not sure if that's actually true. Um, and then, um, yeah, we decided to launch. I think it was in March, um, and it was um, it was a really hectic day, I would say. Um, okay. The I guess our first users really supported us from the start, which made us go to the front page quite fast. And so that really helped us uh, to get more upvotes and people started sharing it um, on Twitter and then, you know, other social media. So that definitely helped us. And I think we were number one for like um, 23 hours of the day. And then um, the, one la the one final hour. Yeah, the <laughs> final hour we dropped to spot four or five. I don't, I think okay. spot four. Um, and then for one moment I was super disappointed 
Mm. But then in the end, you know, you, I think we doubled our user base in wow. one day or one week. Um, and it, of course, it was still quite small then, but that was huge for us. Um, yeah. We got so much more traffic, um, a lot of feedback. Um, yeah, people uh, started following us uh, on Twitter. So everything just kind of exploded on one day. Um, and, and, you know, we made sure that we had some uh, time in the days afterwards because there was quite some some follow up and then decided to share the, the product and checklist as well. So yeah, nice. for us it was definitely um, definitely worth uh, worth the effort, and, and um, I would advise to do. So so you saw like a, a spike in spike in user like uh, like signing up. Did you find like the the quality of these users being like higher or lower versus like your current user base? And what was kind of like the conversion rate from you know sign up to paid? Was it like similar to what you would get otherwise or? Um, I think um, we got a lot of free users out of it. Just hard to say if the quality was a lot higher because, you know, the numbers were still quite low in general. But definitely since the launch after and, and, and the months afterwards, um, we started getting a lot more uh, subscribers and, and people upgrading. So I, I wouldn't have like the exact numbers, but I definitely think it kind of like kickstarted like... Yeah a first push and it just gave us a lot more users and probably that then resulted in, in, in more signups, uh, not immediately, um, <laughs> but it, it's, but it's an effect that we saw. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Definitely. No, it's, uh, it's cool. And, um, and so far, so it's been like, uh, 18 months, I would say like you, you started being on Tally. Um, what are like, uh, kind of like what were like the, the biggest challenges that you, that you overcome? Um, There's a lot. Um, I think there's uh, there's some that people don't see, right? Like uh, creating a company uh, in the beginning. Tally was just a one-man company. And uh, as we started growing and as our um, revenue started growing, yeah, we had to set up like an official company. And in Belgium, it's a very complicated process. <laughs> um, we also happened to choose like the wrong accountant that doesn't have experience with SaaS. And so... Mm, a lot of a lot of that has taken a you know it has taken a lot of time like uh, paperwork and and i think it's the worst part like the paperwork everyone it's hates it the worst it. part <laughs> yeah and we're bad at it and it's it's mm. just not our thing so that has been i think the, a big struggle um besides that also kind of um you know we get a lot of feedback and we're talking to users all the time um but we we're only with two people so we only have very limited capacity of, of things that we can do so we have to kind of learn to say no uh, we have to say no a lot and it's something that we weren't really good at uh, last year <laughs> I would say um, and it's something we definitely need to do because you know you don't want to give Uh, the wrong expectations to people. We have a public roadmap, so we're very open about what we're working on next. But everyone, of course, wants you know another feature and wants it faster. Um, and so we had to had to just learn to put boundaries uh, and also to to plan some focus time to really work on and grow the product um, because we can easily just be all day like talking to users and, and answering questions. So that was definitely like bringing some structure in, in how we work. Um, that was, yeah, it was definitely a process and it's still something that we're, uh, we're learning to do. What's interesting is uh, you mentioned, you know, like how uh, to say no, like to your users in the early days, which I think it's like the, the hardest thing because the one that yeah. are paying, you're like, okay, they're fucking gods, you know, like they're giving me like food at the end of the month. So I should like cherish them. Um, so how exactly, like you mentioned, you had like a public roadmap. How exactly do you prioritize your features? Is it, um, do you like just put things on there and have people upvote and then you do what people upvote the most or Do you just like uh, have a roadmap that you've decided with uh, Philip, your co-founder, and then, you know, you have people vote or engage? Like how, how does that work exactly? Yeah. So we don't have a uh, public upvoting yet. Um, okay. It is something that we, we want to add, but we decided not to because so we actually keep track of votes. So everyone, someone asks about a certain feature. Um, okay. We have like a feature. A little backlog. cross. 
<laughs> yeah, and that we keep in in, uh, in in notion. And every time someone asks something, like we add a vote, um, and that that's one part. So that definitely helps us to prioritize and just to see, you know, if there's demand. Next to that, we also see like yeah, we kind of need to balance out. Um, the effort and the outcome, you know, how many people are going to use that feature um, and how long will it take to build? Because we also want to release um, regularly. Uh, so we cannot always like uh, plan bigger features um, uh, next to each other. Yeah. So that that also uh, is important. And then there's also, you know, is it a paid or a free feature? Um which also helps us in, in, in deciding, you know, what are we going to do first? It's not necessarily because it's a paid feature that we will do it sooner, but we also want to keep a balance uh, in there. So I guess those three um, together um, help us to, to um, yeah, to create a roadmap and, and, and to prioritize. No, that's, uh, yeah, I think that's, that's the best way to do it and, uh, and maximize like, uh, you know, like your, your outcome whenever you're creating something. And, uh, I was wondering, like, uh, after 18 months, maybe it's too early, but have you ever, like, decided to kind of, like, kill or remove a feature that you added? We have, we've had features, we added features that we thought everyone would use. And in the end, like, almost no one did, but not almost okay. no one, but it was a lot less used than expected. Um we have like a feature where you can embed other or other tools like a Calendly link or anything in your form. And it had been requested a lot. Uh, and so we, we added it, but it didn't really do anything. Yeah, so no that's traction. something, <laughs> not, yeah, definitely not a lot. Um, I think the other features, you know, because we started very simple and we're also still prioritizing like basic form building features that we feel like that everyone needs. Um, so we haven't had a lot of features that we, we regretted. Um, but I think, yeah, that was one that was just being used less than, than we expected. No, that's, uh, that's cool. And, um, and do you feel like, uh, what are for you, you would say like in the, in the coming like months, the, the biggest challenge that you're going to face? Um, well, we're actually, we, we want to launch Tally 2.0, okay. um, and we might do another product and launch as well, because we feel like it's been a year and the product has changed a lot. It's um, time to get more users from product. Yeah. Time to get, <laughs> time to get more users. Um, but you know, we still have to very clearly define what will be in it. Um, and if we do it 2.0, we also want it to be world worthwhile for the users. Um, and so it has some features that require a lot of uh, yeah technical effort so we're kind of seeing what is doable and and when do we want to launch so that's what's on our minds right now um so yeah i guess that will be uh, the biggest challenge for uh, for the next weeks nice super interesting i mean yeah you you shared like uh, i think a lot of questions that you know people are asking themselves when they get started about you know, like how do you move from your job to like launching a project, doing it also, you know, with your partner, I think is, uh, is something like quite incredible. And, uh, I'm really looking forward, you know, to see like, uh, how, how you evolve, how you grow with the company and, uh, and how we can follow like, uh, all, uh, all this journey, um, to kind of like, uh, wrap up, uh, the podcast. I always ask like, uh, three questions <laughs> for, uh, for bootstrap, uh, founders. So, what uh, is a book or a podcast that uh, you like to listen or read? Um, yeah, I'll I have to be honest. I haven't been reading a lot uh, okay. lately because um, <laughs> not a lot of time. But for me, like the, the, the content that is most valuable about, you know, the product we're building and bootstrapping, you know, that I find online, mainly on, on Twitter. Um, so there's a lot of people, um, you as well, that I that I follow uh, on there. Um, and yeah, if there would be a book, um, I think the Indie Hackers podcast is also definitely uh, nice, a good yeah. one uh, to follow. Um, and if there would be a book, um, I think Intercom on Marketing is, is, is one that I've recommended a lot in the past. Um, it's like a really interesting story about how they started with just 
one person or even no one like really focused on marketing and then how they grew into this content marketing Huge machine. Company, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that, that's definitely, um, it's very well written as well. So that's definitely something I, I would recommend uh, to read. Nice. Um, who is your like favorite bootstrap founder and why? <sighs> Good question. Oh, there's so <laughs> many. Um, I don't know if I have one favorite one, like I've been following um, the guys from super.so, um, okay. they're building basically like the tool to build your website with Notion. Yeah, I Notion, think they're, yeah. they're doing great. Um, there's um, Davis Bear who is building like social media tool. There's so many, um, <laughs> so I wouldn't, I wouldn't really have one, one, one favorite one. Okay. And, uh, and whenever, you know, like, uh, you have tough times, what are the things you do like to, to get uh, a boost in energy? Yeah, that's a good one. Um, I guess just get out of the house, you know, go for a drink, try to not think of or talk about Sally, um, which is difficult if you, of course, live together with your co-founder. So we're also talking about it all the time. Um, so just trying to, you know, get out of it definitely helps. Um, and also, like some days we just get a lot of negative feedback, uh, you know, that, that can happen as well. And then it just helps to read like the positive, yeah. <laughs> the positive <laughs> shout outs and tweets <laughs> and the nice emails. And then that kind of helps me to, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's definitely like, uh, <laughs> yeah, we, we actually have like, uh, in our Slack channel, something called uh, customers love and we put like all the positive message. So I agree with you. Like yeah. when I'm depressed, I just go into that channel and I'm like, ah, that feels good. Yeah, just, <laughs> you know, some just people, breathe well, it in. not everyone, but <laughs> yeah, I do it as well. If I see that Philip has like a hard time, then I'm sending mm. him like some, uh, you know, some compliments <laughs> that positive. he might not have, not have read yet. And like, like, wow, you know, did you see that? And then, yeah, it, it gives more energy. <laughs> nice. That's super cool. Um, well, Mary, it was like really nice chatting with you. Like where, where can people like, uh, follow you or follow your journey? Like what's the best way to reach out? Yeah, I think the best way would be on Twitter. Um, we're at Taliforms or uh, my account is at Mary Martens. Um, nice. And we're sharing everything that we're doing um, on there. And yeah, our website is tally.so. Super excited to uh, to see you like uh, keep growing and keep sharing with uh, with Tali your Stuart story. Wishing you all the best you and so uh, have an awesome day. Thank you so much for for having me. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye bye. Take care. Thank you for listening to the Bootstrap Stories, the only podcast where Bootstrap entrepreneurs share their journey in all transparency. If you enjoyed this episode, don't hesitate to leave us a review. And in case you want to see the interview, all episodes are live on the YouTube channel. Check out the link in the description and hit subscribe if you haven't already. Have an amazing day and make sure to also join us in our amazing Bootstrap community where we all helped each other to become successful and grow a profitable business. Take care and talk to you soon.